Hi, I'm Tom Rankin, architect and faculty leader of the Cal Poly Rome program in architecture. I've lived here in Rome for most of my professional career. I've been teaching for Cal Poly for about 15 years. This year, we're completing the first experiment in virtual study abroad. And I'd like to tell you about some of the successes and challenges the students and I have faced. When teaching this program on site, students spend about equal time in the studio or classroom and out in the city or on the road. For example, there are frequent outings to see buildings, to meet with architects, to explore neighborhoods like this one. During the remote program, all of this still happens, but using completely different tools. Instead of getting on public transit or a chartered coach, we use maps, photographs, and videos to investigate our destinations. Of course, this isn't a substitute for the real human encounter with all of its sensorial subtleties, but it does provide a number of interesting advantages. Some are practical. A virtual exchange doesn't require transportation, special lodging and meals, so the financial threshold can be much lower making experiences available to a wider and more diverse demographic. Barriers which sometimes limit access are more easily overcome through remote learning. Another advantage involves the use of multimedia. A virtual site visit can seamlessly switch between drawings, models, performance data, and first-person video experience. Uh, we're going to be live in about 20 minutes or so. Rome has a long history of progressive mobility options. If we start with the ancient Roman road, the, the mother of all roads, they call her. The... So this plan that I think you know well shows you the city, the historic center, and specifically the Campus Martius. Unlike our in-person visits, everyone has the best view. Buongiorno. 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 Come stai? Bene, bene. Bene. <laughs> Security restrictions have sometimes limited access to buildings, but in our virtual visits, they're crafted to pass through even all the closed doors. We can also travel back in time pretty easily at our computers. Switching back and forth from present day to historic images without having to pass around an old handout or squinting at an iPad under the bright sun. To help the students interpret the maps, I take them remotely to visit local experts like Professor Alan Seen. On Via Monturo, which is down the end of Via Banchi Vecchi. The Quartiere dei Banchi. Another major map is uh, the Falda the map. There's the date on the screen. Students in the Rome program engage with one another in online seminars. They can share their individual takes on common readings, they can ask questions, and all of the feedback is recorded so it can be viewed asynchronously. What are the values that are considered when uh, you're altering the landscape or the cityscape of Rome? really happy with this discussion. I think Rome definitely has done that well because they have so many of these ancient monuments like when Tom was taking us around on his bike you literally like you're walking through these tiny streets with apartments on either side and you turn the corner and it's like oh. Anybody know where we are? fountain, which is actually fed by one of the ancient aqueducts. I've been teaching online since the early lockdown in Italy, and I've been surprised at how online communication 
really allows and for and supports social and cultural discourse. So we need a lecture hall and we'll put some seminar rooms. Architectural pedagogy in particular depends on outside critiques of students' design work. And I found that it's far easier for visitors to join a review when it's remote from wherever they happen to be at the time. As with student visits, everyone gets a front row seat and everybody can zoom in and observe the work closely. We're using tools which make it easy and non-invasive for multiple critics and students to sketch over one another's work to add commentary in real time. Now, collaboration doesn't just mean between students and professors. We're also promoting um, international, interactive, peer-based collaboration. I teach courses on sustainable urbanism and architectural engineering for the University of Rome. I always find opportunities for students from both cultures to meet and participate in cross-disciplinary and cross-cultural workshops and projects. Hi, I'm Francesca. I'm from Rome. Uh, yeah, I'm Keegan, and I'm also in sunny San Luis Obispo. My name is Ronaldo. I'm from Sicily. Hi, I'm Leanne, and I'm also in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, I'm Sofia, and I'm from uh, Latino. The experience and insight students get remotely on the lessons, which I teach on site here in the heart of Rome, give them a broader cultural awareness. Salute California. That's okay, we're just getting going here. This is the morning after um, the Greater Rome Recon Mission. 7 a.m. Rome time, 10 p.m. slow time. We just kind of went on Google Maps and kind of plotted out mm -hmm. the, our entire trip. going to replace St. Peter's with a Renaissance building and so he designed a classical temple and there it is. The remote Rome experience as a virtual study abroad brings students from all over the world to experience the complexity, the richness, the cultural vitality that is Rome and to prepare for a time when they can actually experience it themselves. A virtual international exchange isn't a substitute for actually being here, but it does prepare students for what they'll expect to find when they come here in the future.